My name's Chris. And I'm Christy. This is the Washing Up Podcast. Woo, and light camera action, people. Lights, camera action Let's and... break that fourth wall and go behind the scenes. And in what is a massive, massive moment and something I've been trying for a very long time. Ladies and gentlemen, the executive producer of the Great Australian Bake Off, Nicole Rogers. How are you going, Nicole? Hi, guys. How are you going? Yes, you have been Ooh. trying hard for many years. It's yeah. nice to be here. Thank you for removing the AVO. I promise <laughs> I won't stalk that machine. <laughs> you put the binoculars down. That's a good thing. I did. And I did yeah, tracking. You know. <laughs> it is an absolute... You know. Yeah. So, so oh, you guys are legends and, and the greatest supporters of this show and God love you for it. Oh, thank you. Aww, thank well, you. I mean, this has been something that a lot of people have been actually asking for. And I, when I first mentioned it to you and you went, nobody wants to hear that. And I'm oh. like, you better believe they do. <laughs> yeah, we, um, we know all about the bakers. We've seen them. Yeah, we've you seen know, them do things. Like we see them on screen all the time. Like, what we don't yeah. get to do is the work puppet out. Master. Yeah, the puppet master. <laughs> they go quick. <laughs> Put some self raising in that <laughs> scone mix or whatever. I don't quick, know. Matt, give them judgmental eyes. Anyway, <laughs> so. <laughs> I would never say that. Never. Never in a million years. <laughs> never. Matt says to you, can I be kind? And you're like, no, no kindness for you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I smile? No, I can't smile. Of course no you can smile. smile, Matt. Smile more. No <laughs> smiling till Easter. It's like a school. Um, <laughs> not allowed to. So what school doesn't let you smile until that's an Easter? Old, that's an old teacher's wives' tale. Is what that the they tell first year teachers don't smile till Easter? It's a load of crap. Oh. Like, who wants a teacher that sits at the front going, no, I hate what you? What if they receive a Valentine, you know, in February? Frown more. Um, so, <laughs> like, not from a student, obviously. That, that's incorrect. That's why that's I said frown more. Yeah. So, anyway, um, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on. And, and we're just going to get into it because there's so much ground to cover. And there's so much to, to talk to you about. I want to go back. All the way back, if you can remember that far back, I'm not talking about the last season. Um, I'm talking about if you go all the way back to what we call Series One, and I, yeah. I refer to Series One, which is Foxtel Series One, not Series yeah. Zero, which is the <laughs> Channel Nine show. Um, we don't talk about that. We don't. But that's well. First thing I wanted to ask you is, what's the process like of like rebooting a show that's been massive overseas? But it's been tried here and maybe didn't get the reaction people thought it might. Yeah. Look, you know what? It's, 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 it's a tricky one because mm. you never know what's going to work. The Australian TV market is, is, it has, is a tricky one. Mm. Um, but with a format like Bake Off, it's just so well loved. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. and, and look, it's made in, in excess of, 25 different regions, I think now, which is just incredible. That, yeah, it's a, it, there, 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 there's a lot of bake offs out there, but mm-hmm. um, the pressure is massive. But it, it doesn't to to recreate it and and make it, you know, still true to its core values is 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 hard. But it, it's it's also a lot of pressure and it's not just up to this i'm going to say this from the from the start it's not just about me you know there are a lot of people involved in that process and we we've worked very closely along the way when particularly when we were putting it together how can we make it australian but remain true to the format and of course where, where do you start you start with okay if we don't put it in a marquee where are we going to put it we're going to put it in a shed (laughs) and i can (laughs) As you do, and we've got we've got more questions and about the construction of that for later. So. I'm glad you didn't go with the oh, okay. Like yeah. that's the portal <laughs> was probably a good thing to avoid. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I imagine ovens in there. God, yeah, yeah, that'd be <laughs> awful. <Hell>. Everything. Oh, <laughs> the smell. <laughs> someone doesn't like someone else's bake, so they go and tip the portal over. It's, yeah. just, <laughs> it's suddenly a festival afternoon. Um, I don't know why I've gone Portaloo and not something like Beach Pavilion or whatever, but I'm so glad it's a shed. <laughs> I'll be all. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's so funny how something, once you create the structure, 
the rest of it tends to fall into place. But it also comes with casting as well. And the casting was really key in this and putting together that the the main cast, and when I talk about the main cast, I mean Matt, Maggie, Mel and Claire, that, that was that was so key to making it work and, and having people that that gel but also give a point of difference and can mm-hmm. carry it um, but can also relate uh, relate to Australia's audiences. Well, that's, that's and that was really, really about. key. That's one thing we talk about with yeah. that. So in hindsight, that casting is absolutely perfect. Like it's um, phenomenal. My, mm-hmm. my thing was, is that the direction you were sort of thinking all the way along or did the people that you sort of found for that then give you that direction that you wanted to go? Well, I think... <laughs> But Mel, starting with Mel and Claire, mm. um, those guys are just, um, that was sort of, a, a, that was workshops with Foxtel yep. to begin with. And they're you know, incredible talents, both of them, mm. those girls. And they were already in, invested in the program as well on a UK oh, wow. level. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, but when, when, you know, we did screen test other people, surprise, surprise, but those Two Dave together just work. <laughs> not, up, not up to it. Um, what's this bake? Peter Burner did <laughs> too dry. <laughs> did not <laughs> look like point either. <laughs> oh dear! But those girls, we just knew from the start that those girls were perfect together. They were honestly just their natural banter mm. and how they just engage with people was just incredible. And, I mean, it was a no-brainer to, to, to get the beautiful Maggie on board mm-hmm. and, and just her warmth and her um, just, just, yeah, understanding. Of, like she just has an absolute what, joy in um, seeing people yeah. experiment and excel and, you know, yeah. um, just create. She, yeah, so that was yeah. Great. I mean, she's discovered food, even though food has been in her life, her entire life. But, you mm-hmm. know, it, it, she still creates now. She still experiments now. And, and yes, yeah, she's got, um, you know, you know a Maggie Bake when you see it um, okay. or you hear it. Mm-hmm. But well, you, you see you the verdure in the rest do. of the list. Yeah, you, of course you do. <laughs> and, the, and, and the quince paste yes. and, and, the, and all of that. Yes, but Are also things? she is the other things, yes. Um, and you know, <laughs> you know, she she's just she's wonderful because she just has experimented throughout her in, and I hate using the word journey, but her food journey. And mm-hmm. and then also Matt um, being a trained chef mm-hmm. and, and he started um, as as a pastry chef. Like a lot of people don't know that about him, but um, that that was one of his first jobs, and and then he's just got such a breadth of knowledge. It was just Mm -hmm. like we, and and he's so chalk. Well, both of them together, they're like chalk and cheese, but they've got the most (laughs) incredible relationship. Like they are gorgeous. It's it's the rapport they all develop. I mean, with the the. Claire and, and Mel. What I love about yeah. that too is that if you look at the overseas versions, what they've done is they've gone out and they've got double acts. Like Britain got yeah. Mel and yeah. Sue, and they've been double act for years. Yeah. If, you at, if you look at Canada yeah. now, yeah. they've gone out and got a, a double act in Carolyn and Aurora. But yeah, if, with what you found, they just they gelled so perfectly. Um, How can they not? They're like Triple J and ABC alum, you know? (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah, everyone else has had to to sort of find a double act, whereas, you know, go out and get them and bring them in. What you've put together, they've just just clicked so beautifully. They they are, and they're beautiful beautiful humans to work with, all four of them, I have to say. I'm quite blessed. Mm. And, like, even though they've all got their own expertise and skills and stuff, there is this underlying um, respect and regard for the bakers that have come into the shed. And I think that yeah. that really plays through. And because they all have that, you can see them working together, you know, within their own kind of skill set and their own role there. Mm. But to make it yeah. as positive an experience as, as um, possible and we get to reap the rewards of it, just watching it on the telly. Yeah. 
And I mean, our other big yeah. my couch warm. And our other big and important Working question. Working on my indent. <laughs> <laughs> and our other big and important question we have to, what we have to ask for the podcast listeners is, Maggie Beer, have you been to Stately Beer Manor and seen the Virtues fields over which Maggie lords? Because, like, it's become well, more on the podcast is the, the, the Virtues fields, Stately Beer Manor, the butter hoard that yes. exists in the, in the, the, the den of it. Um, well, Beer Manor. look, I... A lot of people, well, no one would probably know this about me, but I'm an Adelaide girl. So oh, yeah. even before, even it's before legendary. knowing Maggie, I had visited the Virgie fields and patted the pheasants and and <laughs> and the helicopter overhead, the Maggie copter overhead. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> true, we told you all. It's true. Uh, <laughs> Regret last year. I went down to a conference in Adelaide and. I was really trying to get everyone to stay down for the weekend and then for us all yeah. to hire a car and head out just to pheasant mm. so I could go <laughs> on pat a pheasant. It. It's just, it's like, come on, it's Maggie Beer. It's like an Australian yeah. to not do this. <laughs> so Exactly. You've got to go visit Maggie. If, if you're down there and you've got the time, you've got to go. It's like a pilgrimage. Instead, yeah. we caught a tram to Veal Gardens. Yeah, we did. That was, it's not really a... It's not, it's not really a fair trade-off. I mean, we get this, fan, so obviously it was a Richard Marsland tribute in there, but still. Yeah. <laughs> um, the problem, it's, it's not quite Pheasant's Nest. No. Veal Gardens, Pheasant's Nest, not really comparable. Or is it Pheasant Farm? I just... Yeah, right. um, rename Be- it. it. It's Maggie. It's Stately Bee Manor. That's, that's all. She, she, yeah. She, it, honestly, she still feels like a, 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 like this magical human to me. Like, I do get, like... Yeah, I've spent a lot of time with Maggie, but she she still feels like this. I I don't know, like she's an ethereal being. Like I get nervous and a little bit I, starstruck around it's, her. No, it's, it's, the, well, it's like, the closest. Uh, it's the closest to a Menzies reaction I've ever had. The one time I was in her <laughs> presence, and I'm like, I did, but see her passing by, and I'm like, okay, no, no, yeah. no, let's not. It's like she just she glides, she glides effortlessly. She does. Um, it's incredible. She does. Um, so. Yeah. The, the the first general question in she glides effortlessly on a um what's that thing called as well a roundabout a merry go round merry go round merry go round um so, yeah, merry go round yeah <laughs> exactly so my quest my, my first sort of question in terms of the show itself is a general one why do you think it works or why do you the, love it yeah um okay so for me it is there's something about bakers. Bakers are beautiful humans. <laughs> they they just are, and um, so that in itself, um, introducing introducing the bakers into into this bizarre TV world, that just it just changes the dynamic. Like I just can tell you that right now, bakers <laughs> are just nice human beings. So you mix that with reality television, you go, oh, oh would that really work? I don't know. Like, how's the that format, happening? but it, yeah. <laughs> like, it, <laughs> how are we going to get drama <laughs> from, from all the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are we? Is someone going to cut their finger? We don't care <laughs> if they do. Well, we do. We'll just go and take them away. We won't play it out a story. We'll just put a little blue band-aid on it and then <laughs> they'll just go back and bake. <laughs> and Maggie will go and give them a cuddle. Um, but but the the form- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but look, the, the, the format of the program is simple and I think it comes down to that. It's a very simple format. It's accessible. And that's the other thing. Baking is something that all of us do. Baking is nostalgic and it, it just rings true, I think, and to, to a lot of people. Um, but we've tried to, I know there's, in the recent season, there's been some trickier bakes, yes, um, but there's always stuff that's accessible in that you've either tasted it, you've heard it, um, heard about it, you've seen it. Um, yeah, so it's a simple format, I think, the, the fact that we're, we're, we've got beautiful bakers um, and we're celebrating their successes. Yes, there are some disasters because, hell, you know, I, I even I burn a toast. And, <laughs> yeah, stuff is going to happen. But it's the way it's set up, you know, that when I was handed this 
this show to make. There was one thing that um, the original creators said to me, um, Love Productions, and they said, the mantra is love the bakers, love the bakes. If that stays in your mind, you'll make a beautiful show. And, and that's something that has always stayed with me. I think it was the best advice mm. I was ever given. And I've gotten the most amazing crew that have um, stuck with me and made this show and, um, and they've made it incredible. And, and um, we all have a fun time. I mean, TV is hard and they're long hours and, and all of that, but we all laugh. We all laugh (laughs) and we have fun and we all get to eat and it's just a beautiful, magical set to be on. And I was going to say that. Yeah, it really um, is. That it's not like other reality shows, like the old Big Brother days. You know, you're not getting like fresh, freshly baked goods delivered to your door. Um, (laughs) (laughs) No, no, it's not. And you're making like not that I I don't know if you're on because I'm just thinking of the first reality. <laughs> show, cause you go, but it's it's a bit. I said it's a different. It's a it's a it's a different concept of a show in terms of there's a competition, but the competition feels like the mm. furthest thing from anybody's mind. It's yeah. about yeah. and we've spoken to bakers over the years, and we've had them on the podcast talking about things, mm. like, you know, going in on the morning and going, I don't have a recipe for that, and someone else going, oh, I've got a recipe for that. What you need to do is try this, yeah. this, this, or this, and it's just the way they will sort of share communally, which is something that yeah. you don't see a lot of. And it's, it's why we always talk no. about it being the nicest show on television. Yeah. People are allowed to be yeah. authentic on there. Like there's no one's reactions yeah. that are happening. Yeah. That you see uh, escalated mm-hmm. or inflated or over-dramatised. Mm-hmm. I mean, that mm-hmm. moment when Fee Nguyen dropped her pie. <laughs> that and, is uh, legitimate. It's like, oh, the sweary canary. My darling sweary canary. Oh, my darling sweary canary. Oh, that was awful. We were just like, oh, the crew were horror. Uh, were like, we oh. just all wanted to jump in and help. It was awful. It was like, <laughs> and we actually toned down that edit. And, yes, see, I'm <laughs> telling everyone about that. We yeah. have cut out swear words. That, that <laughs> sequence of events went on for longer, but we protected you because Having- we loved you. Having and spoken, having spoken to Fee many, 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 many times, yes. Um, <laughs> we love you, Fee. We love you, Fee. We love you, Fee. <laughs> just some reel out the back, you know, that's like six, yeah, six hours of, sw- of Fee it's, swearing. It's like Cinema Paradiso. Um, it's like there's yeah. not a lot of scenes cut out or anything like that. It's just swearing. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the legitimate thing, you know, and just because I need to get a dig in at least once a podcast, you know, Robert only using one pan to make a, a, a cake when everyone else was using two. I mean, that's a legitimate Robert thing. I mean, it's just, I had to get the shot yeah. in. I'm sorry. I'm so... No, I'm also, not. Also, when you have like, like Chris and Barb in there, like, you know those mouths are not just saying sweet, innocent, yeah. whoopsies. Yeah. What did I do here? Yeah. And, they, and, of course, they yeah. had to be in there when Clafuti happened. And... <laughs> Yes. Um, of course Maggie, they did, didn't they? Maggie yeah. and Clafuti. I mean, she just, uh, just popped up and happy to see you. All, all, all popped up and happy to see you. And Matt Moran's reaction on that. Now, I, I have to ask, this will come up a bit later on as well, but I do have to ask, yeah. how long was the laugh reel on that? <laughs> how long was, sorry? The laugh reel on Maggie saying all oh. popped up and happy to see you, followed by we, Matt Moran deadpan. We ha- well, we had to... Um, we we actually may have, we had a lot less cam- camera coverage on that because um, the cameramen were laughing so much <laughs> that we had no steady shots because we all lost it. Like we all lost it. Everyone lost it, and that is not the one. That's not the only time that that's happened. And yes, I will admit to that. But what do you do? There's been a few times where. Darling Maggie's come out with a doozy and not realised what she said. And we have no stable shots to use in an edit because we're all just pissing ourselves laughing. And, and the benefit is too, by no, the way, that podcast is, that that episode is one of the only episodes there are two podcasts for, which I love. Oh, because that was the week Christy was away. So I had Robert and Elena Duggan from MasterChef on. 
that week. Oh, and bless. then Christy came Aww. back and watched that episode and went, we need to do a mini episode. <laughs> so we have two Aww. podcasts on that Definitely. one episode just because of Apple Corfuti. So yeah. <laughs> that, that one thing. So uh, speaking of Apple Corfuti, mm? um, one yeah. of the most common ass things that I've ever had um, is yeah. how do you set out the themes and the challenges? Is it just, this is what I feel like eating? Is it technique? Is it combination? What is it? Well, it varies. And I, we've got the most amazing supervising food producer. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out to Kate Nichols. Um, Let's get her on. We've, I, Robert has also said to me many times, speak to Kate. <laughs> yep. so. Yeah. She is an incredible human and it, it, she's a chef. And um, have worked on MasterChef as well. And she, um, she and I will probably every year, like uh, honestly, you should see our uh, text message exchanges. They're very visual. It's sort of like we'll see something and then we'll just, it's just food pics. It's food porn to one another. And it's really funny. It's just like it will be really random. I'll wake up one morning and then I'll look at my phone and it's just like some like, picture of something that Kate has seen in some magazine or website or um yeah it's just random or I or I'll go I'll I'll do the same thing back to her or we'll talk about something that we would really like to eat yes sometimes it's basically that yeah, I'm imagining we, that in the future there's like um, digital archaeologists that will like find your messages and think it's like some weird yeah. British this weird <laughs> Yeah, they'll think it's kinky. Like no, <laughs> no joke. I reckon they'll go, "What's going on here?" And then, um, yeah, honestly, but look, it's a massive beast. <laughs> yeah, absolutely so pom. Um, but it is. Look, I wish I. Um, times like these, I wish I could show everyone some photos of what our <laughs> mind food mind map um, looks like. And you need it a Pinterest is, board. On, <laughs> I, yeah, it it is actually consists of a lot of post-it notes um, in meeting rooms and people um, who are on other shows at Fremantle and when they walk past the food room when we're putting together the, the matrix, as we call it. Six, seven, eight times. Actually, <laughs> yeah. They'll be like, what the hell is going on in here? And then like there'll be pictures. They'll be like, yeah. It's so, like, like some massive, like, Roman dinner party. That's what they think we're doing. But <laughs> it's... it's 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 really um, it's hard to putting together a matrix because you do need to be seeing different things and something that we have you know we always want for an audience is to get take home information and not to actually keep seeing the same processes over and over again. We want people to see different things. We mm-hmm. want them to see strange things. We want them to see nostalgic things. So. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it does take many, many, many months to put that matrix together every series. And, and Kate and I are always messaging one another throughout the year, randomly. I was, I was overseas recently and I just started sending her photos of really, like, random stuff from, um, <laughs> I was in the north of England. And I was like, we should do this. And then, um, and then, like, I'm not going to tell you what it is because it may no, or may this not. Could work. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 This um, could work. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's just <laughs> random. Yeah. It's just random. But also, it's actually quite precise as well when it comes down to the final picks. It's sort of like, um, you know, you, you guys um, already know how Mamul came about and how Spice Week came about because I, I'm acting, for those that haven't heard, I, I, I'm partly French, um, Egyptian, and so I was brought up on Mediterranean food, but um, my father is actually English. So Spice Week, I wanted to do a Mediterranean week and I thought it was too specific and then anyway, I wanted... I, I wanted to eat the biscuits that my, my grandmother used to make me and that was my mall. And then, and then we were like, we created a whole week around that. So, um, and, and then I just, really that was like basic. <laughs> oh, which is nice. 
It's good, good it's for farm animal. Like, vegan, like yeah, vegan week yeah. as well. I mean, like the same same sort of thing. Oh well, I will tell you who you came up with vegan week, and that was my wonderful um, co-executive producer David Briegel Jones. Shout out to him because well he done, keeps me. He's he's an incredible human. He started to be a plant strong human um, a couple of years ago. Um, I well, love he that. He dabbled well, in that. being plant strong. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and so he was like, we need to do a vegan week. And I was all like, mm, I don't know about that. And then, um, <laughs> really? and then anyway, he, he won me over. He started buying me vegan treats and I was like, this is nice. And He's then he bribing you. Vegan. <laughs> yeah. The beautiful thing bribing is. Bribing me with food. Yeah. yeah. The, the beautiful thing is, is that he's, he's introduced this to like through you to the rest of us because yeah. now I'm kind of like, oh, a vegan bait. Well, I, well, the <laughs> only fine. thing, I'm not the only it. thing from a series recently that I've actually attempted was the technical. You know, I actually really? attempted that vegan technical. Yes. Yeah. How did so, you go, well, though? Okay. So, all right. <laughs> there was, there was an issue. Um, it kind of flopped a bit. So yeah, what I did was the <laughs> side was perfect. The outside making that ridiculous pancake was, didn't, didn't work. Yep. So what I did was I went with vegan pastry and made it into a pie instead. Um, How did that go? Really well. The vegans that I fed it to absolutely <laughs> loved it. Um, yes. And other people who were non-vegan had it. Went, That's really nice. But the filling was just delicious. It was absolutely brilliant. So the brilliant. recipe worked. And somebody who has more yeah. pancakes than me could yeah. have made the whole thing. Um, yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. I think it was less about the recipe and possibly more about the skill level of. No, I, you're so skilled, and I love what you cook for me, my love. Um, Be very careful. I was catering a very large event for you at the no, time. I, no, <laughs> I, no, I'm so appreciative. I'm just. I'm, no, I had. I had yeah. them actually work. You the had problem, a lot going the prob- on. The problem he is, he had a smoker going. He had brisket. So I had everything happening. Boy, boy. So. Oh, so much it was a smoker. Like, they, they ah, yeah. pro- the problem with that was that it was about taking them out and, and the time, of how long they're pliable to be able to wrap. And they're not as yeah, right. pliable as you think they are for as long as you think they might be. And so they broke. Yeah. That was the problem. And I was trying to rescue it. And I'm sending photos to bakers going, is this okay? <laughs> It, it was on a time gone. crunch. It was like real life bake off. You were on a I time crunch. It was on crunch. a time crunch. It is that difficult, people. So it didn't matter. We were all running late for shit anyway. So yeah. It's but, all good. But yeah, no, it, it did the actual genesis of the bake and the whole mm. concept of the bake worked really well. Mm. And if I'd had more time Absolutely. to do it, I could have actually done the whole thing. So when you're talking about making it accessible, like me doing Vegan Week, I mean, I, I, yeah. I, if you'd I said that to it him five years ago. Oh. He yeah. would have just been yeah. laughing in our faces, mm. scoffing, <laughs> just poo-pooing. Even yep, poo-pooing, yes. yes. I pooed been... it when it was first suggested to me. But, you know, I was one over. I was convinced have... and I was like, oh, there's something in that. Have yep. there been moments where you've literally just sort of said to someone, no, I really just want this and that's the end of it? <laughs> <laughs> I just want um, it and yeah. that's it. Yeah, there has been that. There was like a series. Yeah, there has been that. Um, series, uh, series two, um, where we had bubkas um, yeah. and we had oh, bagels. Yeah. Um, it's a bubka or a panettone, I can't remember. Bag- um, <laughs> yeah. And the bagels, yes. <laughs> yeah. That was. That was pretty much, it was, yeah, that was series two or three. That yep, was just like, true. that was just based on on um, me and my series producer at the time um, desperately uh, wanting to eat bagels and babka. And <laughs> that was just because we wanted to. And like, also I could really do with some funny. <laughs> yes, that's great. I feel- I, I think people are, are, are lucky that I'm not in your position. Like if there was a weird kind of bizarro world and I was the exact producer of Bake Offs, it would just be Cobloaf Week every week. Yeah, and that's something you do bring up. Yes, the Cobloafs. Why aren't they? Yeah. Why haven't they make a, an appearance yet? Because you want, you want people to get nostalgic. Cobloaf. I know. <laughs> I know. I know a Cobloaf. You know, I actually... There was, I wanted to do one of, I, I did what one, see, look, 
let, let's rewind. Okay. Break week is always a really tricky week to do because there's a lot of proving. There's a yes. lot of proving and bread week Proving's is not always... <laughs> a proving drawer is not amazing TV. We're just waiting for the Easter. No. It's yeah. Just it's just like, gorgeous. I don't want to wait for fermentation. Like, come on. Can I bring, can I bring Marcus before? back into dance? Can Marcus come back into dance? Good. How brilliant was Marcus? Oh, my God. He used to, every morning, even there was a lot of dancing that we couldn't incorporate into that series. There was so much dancing that we couldn't include at all, and it was amazing. He used to cheer us up with his dances. Him okay. as the first AD. You yeah. to dance all the time. Anyway, we're going off track. We need to talk no, no, about no, bread no, and cops. No, 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 yeah. I will say though, I'm going to pitch you dancing with the bakes. Like that's just we've got we've got mm. we've got we've got a big cast already. There's yeah. a couple of British bakers. There's a couple of Australians. There's a couple of Canadians. It's all part of the listen to your bakes world tour for the people that listen to the bakes. Of course, Noel being the Australian representative of that. Um, yeah. So Val from yeah, Val British, from British, yeah. of course. So we've we've got a broad. Yeah, you know, that that's something to look forward to. I think maybe something you can get into yeah, production yeah. of dancing and listen to your bass. We love to. I think it would yeah. work. Well, you that need to do good. the journey, journey and Charchi kind of spin off. <laughs> <laughs> the journey of Scotch is because of bake off is dancing and listening to bakes. Yes. Perfect. So, so bread week. So, as we were saying, yeah, cobbles. Yeah, bread week. Bread week. So, Cob- yeah. Cobbs. Okay. Cobbs. I don't know. I don't know why we haven't done it. It just it has tended not to fit into the random world of <laughs> of making the the matrix fit together and seeing something different. But you know what? So I love. I like you being anti cob. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the closest we've got to cob is probably this year, but it kind of was a purple cob. So um, yeah, it, was. it was kind of a cob. It was cob shaped. <laughs> it was cob shaped. It was purple. It was oh, cob shaped. It was oh, a cob shaped bread. <laughs> yeah, it was cob shaped. There you go. There you go. There's my answer to it. There you go, Christy. I think that you want to. You yeah, want a cob. All right. I'm just Fine. thinking, like, people's choice. Because I know that I've yeah. several, okay. several fans. Yeah, people. Yeah, I okay. can. I should listen to people more. You know, talking of cob, one of the best cobs I've ever eaten yeah. was in Vienna, right? And I really mm-hmm. wanted to do this. But then Kate, like, she just looked at me and <gasps> no. gave me crazy eyes. Like, she gave me crazy Kate eyes. She's like... She's like tiny little Kate is like this little tiny scary human who's adorable, and then um, so I came back from Vienna and I'd had I was at the Christmas market. You know, all over Europe they have the Christmas market, and I had goulash right in a cob loaf, and the top had been cut out, and all the dough had been scooped out. And oh. then they put goulash in there oh. and then they put the top back on. So you ate the goulash and then you oh. ate the bread and then dipped it in there and it was the most insane thing. And I was like, I want this on Bake Off. And she's like, well, we can't make goulash, Nick, on Bake Off. And, like, we can't <laughs> fit that into, like, a three-hour bake. Like, yeah. So and for the, the next two and a half days, <laughs> what we're doing is... Yeah. So a two and a half day challenge. I'm sure the bakers just <laughs> love me. Uh, you're, like, and, you're like, and that's yeah. all we have time for this week. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. One challenge lunch. week. Yeah. One what challenge week. Could be a lamb mm. lash, so, you know, Matt gets his, like, product. Yeah. 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 Matt Moran lamb. Yeah. Moran so lamb. good, that well, Matt I mean, look, Moran look, lamb. That, um, that Wellington. Yes. That Wellington. Ooh. Oh, my God. I've oh, never God. tasted anything as delicious as that. Yeah. We anyway, I don't. yeah, we did. We did get yeah. lamb and aria. We were we, we silly. Chose we got the lamb. lamb at uh, aria. But but yeah. no, I mean, look, one one challenge week might work. But as we know, you need three challenges because two challenges didn't cut it in another version. We won't talk about that though. So <laughs> you must we always have that. three challenges. No. Kiwi. Anyway, so um, another interesting. Well, if you think that, let's talk about that. Let, I think let's that's talk a about really that. Important thing. Let's yeah. talk about so, three challenges. Versus so, two challenges. So the and, audience... And look, 
Yeah. yeah. This is spoken quite clearly. And what we found with, with Kiwi Bake Off, and again, we said the bakers were wonderful. It's not so much Kiwi um, Bake Off, it was the format. So because the, format, the bakers were wonderful. Yeah, so the problem with the format that, that we had was that when it got into the challenges, you only had two bakes. Mm. As a result, you weren't getting genuine feet after the first challenge. You're like, who's in trouble? And you're like, no, that seems wrong. Um, yeah. There was also a problem in terms of the way that it was being done in terms of it was rotating. So one week you'd have a technical and a showstopper. Yeah. One week you'd have Mammoth. one week, one yeah. week you'd have it the other way. It was sweet. Dave Dobbins. Yeah. Like we yeah. had to invent a third yeah. challenge all the time because it was just, people were watching. It just it. didn't, it didn't, it didn't work. work. Yeah. It didn't feel. Yeah. And the, and the bakers, yeah. the, the bakers that we did speak to from Kiwi all sort of said for them, it felt like something was missing a little bit. So I think the three yeah. challenges is vital. And what, from a technical perspective, what, how, just talk producer talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll talk producer talk. And uh, look, we all know the signature is an opportunity for the bakers to really, to show what they're capable of doing. That's their spin yeah. on something. Mm -hmm. And that's why the signature is there. The technical is obviously a surprise and some people do better on a technical, other people yep. don't. And that is an opportunity to test baking skills and methods and all of that stuff. And, and also, it, so what was that? And reading comprehension, <laughs> if there is exactly. anything like in the recipe. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of, yeah, I, I think that's a really important challenge to have. Mm. And the showstopper, yes, it, it is a big challenge. That is the biggest challenge. And that's where you can go creatively crazy, where the bakers yep. get an opportunity mm. to really go, this is my brand of baking. This is what I do. So it's, it's every like challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like athletes it's exactly uh, like, like that. have different, like, you know, you'll, or, oh, no, I'm not going to use horse racing as a metaphor. I'm going to use runners. So you've got your long distance runners, you've got your sprint runners, you've got your runners that like to jump over shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and in runners Bake who Off, occasionally like to throw things. We don't have the Olympics yet. No, we're, we're working on we're the working Commonwealth Games. Commonwealth Games hint, hint. Um, but, um, yeah. And so you do, you do, oh, that's what we can do with the Commonwealth Games is really spread it out. <laughs> and you can have your sprint. Exactly. And you, yeah. And, but it's beautiful to see that because then people get into situations that they may not have usually worked in and then find something that they're actually pretty darn good at and surprise themselves. Mm. Like every time exactly. someone goes, I want my technical, I can't believe it. Exactly. It's so true. And um, I, I, I think, the value of having all those three, all those three challenges is really important. So you can see the breadth and the width of every single, every single um, baker and what they're good at doing and what they're not good at doing. And you know, it's it's and it also gets to celebrate what they are good at doing. So yep, it gives yeah. everyone an opportunity to shine. You know? And everyone gets oh, the and other that, thing is too by three bakes you get three different components of the same theme. So like two yeah. components is a bit more dull because you can sometimes one of the problems in Kiwi was that occasionally they would have two bakes that were very similar to each other, and it just felt yeah. like it was repeating. Whereas with this, you've got the ability to have three broad spectrum different styles of bake, which gives yeah. everybody a different range of. You might be good at one part, for example, of Spice Week, but there's different ways to yeah. use spice. But as a consumer as well, like if you go to a restaurant and you pay for like a set menu and you're just getting two courses, you feel a bit ripped off. You, you sit down to yeah. three courses and you're like, okay, satisfied. I've been satiated. That's yeah. perfect. That is perfect. Yeah. Of course, maybe pushing it. Fifth course, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Six course, is this an Italian wedding? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so forth. Uh, yeah. So it's... Seventh course, no, this is a Lebanese <laughs> wedding. <laughs> 100%. Um, now, it's, it's also interesting because the other thing is, like, we know for exact fact that we want to talk about the shed a little bit because it is unique to Australia. Um, you know, as we yeah. said, 
British has British has obviously the tent. Mm. Um, Canadian has Mr. Trick. Canadian has the pavilion, which it doesn't call it, but we do, and yeah. we're hoping. Because um, it's a pavilion. It is a pavilion. It's not a tent. You have the shed. Um, we have now, the shed. So the, the, the thing we really need to ask about when it comes to, to the shed is, first of all, how long does it take to put the damn thing up? <laughs> <laughs> We've got it down to a fine art. We really do. <laughs> uh, but it does take an army, I have to tell you that. So, um, but look, it takes... Look, we store this thing in a really massive warehouse. Oh, that's um, that, in a shed, ironically. Bunnings? Um, <laughs> we, shed, we store the shed in a shed, in a really <laughs> large <section>. shed. <laughs> it's a flat pack shed and Inception we erect it every shed. year. No. <laughs> I mean, it's a, if you think about the process of the shed, it's complicated. It's, it's got working it's parts. Massive. Yes. Yeah, it, it is massive. Look, to, to bump it in, we've got it down to a fine art of about three weeks. Bump in, um, which is the official word for erecting the shed. But um, <laughs> um, it is, I, I, I will, <laughs> uh, erecting. Chris is heavy. I know. I'll tell you a little, sorry, you guys go. No, I was just saying, soon I'll have you saying, I'll rub my buns and all these kind of like innuendos. <laughs> You'll have all the Christisms coming out. Yes. <laughs> so but we're not we're not talking about there are no innuendos when it comes never. to bake off. No, no puns, never. no nothing, no There's innuendos. No never. We never no. do that. We're clean no, no. people. Honest, yeah, honest, never. honest clean fun. <laughs> yeah. So three, so Very three weeks clean, to, honest so three fun. Three weeks to bump it in. And it and yep. it's actually integral bunting. <laughs> Yeah, the bunting. Oh, I've got a story about the bunting, but I will okay. come back to the bunting. All right. Yeah, shed, bunting. The bunting. Oh, shed, bunting. shed Shed number one. So number one, okay, about the shed. So we, I will, t- I'll, I'll reveal something about Ooh. the shed. Ooh. Does it have a name? Big reveal. Mm. Um, no, nah, just the shed. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Read the shed. And Matt, <laughs> oh, they should. Oh dear. But um, it is a marquee. What? And have I shocked everyone? It's a marquee. I know, and we've clad it with <gasps> wood, and we have clad it with corrugated iron. And yes, we yes, the structure because that is that shed does not exist year round. Really? Um. You to come do some renovations. <laughs> no. and no. Look, I don't think all sheds have to be. It six will weeks. only last five weeks. Just yeah. to saying, it'll probably only last five weeks, and then I'll have to go and store it in a shed for a, look, year, a few few months, and then I, I'd have to bump it in again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pro <pretty laughs> shed. You know, like I just don't think if you're born a marquee, you have to stay a marquee. You can become a shed if you're. A, <laughs> You know, if you're, whether you're a, a cis shed or a trans shed, it's okay. You know, we're inclusive here in Bake Off. shed is a mark. I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I know. I'm, have I, I, I hope I haven't destroyed anyone's dreams. No, it's, it's made it it's better. It's still magical. It's it made is, it better because it it's more magical. Yep. Yep. There you go. It is and very then, and, magical. And then you install ovens in a marquee. <laughs> and then we put in plumbing. And we have generators, so it's got lights. We mm-hmm. put in gas and, you know, out, out there where we film where this um, shed is erected, um, we also have um, a little, which you don't see on screen, what we call the demountable city. So when we go on film, there's a whole lot of little cabins where all the offices of all the people and off screen live basically for five weeks we don't sleep <laughs> i like it just a shanty town for crew. <laughs> a shanty it's, town, it's a shanty town. Is there a yep. bar? like like yep. a scoundrel's you know, bar yep. <laughs> yep it's a little shed <laughs> and we actually have to bring in our own water and we oh. have we have to bring in toilets we have to wow. get the toilets pumped out that's really classy and that's, then that's... um it is 
it, we, it, we're like a little town that, that, that pops up for a magical oh, mm, few that weeks. Is, that is like more a, incredible than it just being a shed that gets put up. It's, it's like that, those circuses that used to come into town in the 19th. Yeah. Roll up, roll <laughs> yeah. up. Just like a fairy. Yeah. Maggie, Maggie, Maggie on the high is. wire. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. Matt would be the person putting it in a lion's mouth. Um, just saying. <laughs> no, the lion would be putting it in <laughs> Matt's, Matt's mouth. mouth. Yeah, you're right. Well done. Um, the other thing is British, I know that for a fact, British Bake Off does a test bake every morning in the ovens. Does Australia? Yeah, we we do. We we actually do a lot of test bakes for the technicals. So, um, because the frozen four and we 20. have... <laughs> Yeah, from make sure that, yeah, your party sausage rolls. We just check that the ovens are working with the party sausage rolls. I eat them all. Because Maggie used to be, because Maggie, because um, because Mary Berry in Britain used to be very specific about what they had to make. Mm. It was a, they, mm. it was a sponge every morning. There had to be a sponge in mm. every, oven, which sounds like an election mm. problem. A sponge <laughs> in every oven. Yeah, it does. <laughs> If Jeremy Corbyn runs on that platform, a sponge in every oven. Corbyn, <laughs> <laughs> let the meat cake. Yeah, exactly. Oh. That is what Boris Johnson. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Promise you, Boris. Oh, Boris. Boris. Let's not talk about Boris. Yeah, yeah fuck Boris. Boris. No. So, I he. Do you reckon Boris eats cake? I wonder if he does. I wonder what his favourite cake would be. Would it be baked? Would, what do you reckon? <laughs> I I reckon I I reckon that Boris would talk to you about cake for a very long time without having ever eaten one. It's a little bit. He's a little bit like I, yeah. I think he's a lot like Seymour Skinner in The Simpsons' mother Agnes, um, who has the yeah. book of cake photos but doesn't eat them because cake is too sweet. Um, yeah, probably. I think he might be right. That's one of my favourite games, guys. Is <laughs> what would that person eat? Like it's the celebrity game. Ooh, it's a very fun it, game. That is, that's yeah. a good one. It, I like that. It, oh. It's really good. Like, so when you're watching anything or you see someone in a magazine, a celeb, and you're like, I wonder what their favourite cake is or what their favourite bake is. I mean, let's face it, a lot of those, the really, like, you know, a lot of celebrities probably don't indulge. But, <laughs> yeah, they probably don't they eat full they stop. They the cake in front of them on Instagram and go, cake? And then they take yeah. it out. You know, <laughs> that exactly. bitch that would eat the cake. Lizzo? Lizzo. <laughs> fucking knows she would. I'm going to find out what her favourite bake yeah. is and make it for her or get someone else to make it for her and take it to the opera house. That would be fun. So we got tickets. Yeah. I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> very excited. <laughs> so it's in terms of, I mean, that, that's an interesting game to play because like I've, I've frequently said that for someone who loves Bake Off, I'm not that big on the sweets. Um, personally. Yeah. So, Do you like your savoury mm. bake? I really like the, the, the waffle bake. Oh, yeah. Still one I of am. my favorite things. I frequently make bakers from that series who, when I talk to them, I frequently make them recount the day in the shed baking for <laughs> baking the waffles. here we are waffles. talking about food porn again. This is, yeah. your, this is your, like, yeah. one nine hundred number. Yeah, it, it is. It, it is. Double I'm like, O, I'm double five. I'm like, uh, I'm like I'll, I'll talk to Robert and I'll go, tell me about the waffles. <laughs> yeah. How good were those waffles? That was so good. We were going to do an American week and, mm. and that, that kind of like an, a diner week, American diner week. And then I, I don't, if we can quite put in make it? stuff. Oh, <laughs> oh how I'm could not going to say. <laughs> but then someone could come that? up with how, how you find cherry pie. How good sugar. Um, but <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. do. How good sugar. America? All right. I do, I do have to ask something now because it's, it's been, it's, it's something okay. that I, I we it's commented been on. You. It's, so it's been gnawing from, at you. So free from week. There's a couple of things about free from week from last year. <laughs> from yeah. last year. First, come on. The first okay. thing is we'll come back to Chris's trifle because... Just need to. How, yeah, but, that was just brilliant. Yeah, my yeah. question was, and I do have to ask. We all know that you know Devondale were a a major sponsor. I do have to ask. Oh, there, really? I didn't know that. Where they? Know, it's crazy, isn't it? Oh, hashtag God. you would have been. Where they? Um, but, but far more importantly, I have to ask. Hashtag for, Devondale. Yes. For the sorry. following what? week. For the following week. Was yep. there a deliberate me- point of mentioning butter as often as you could? <laughs> Um, well, we know how Maggie. <laughs> we, know we know how Maggie feels about butter, and like 
I, I like to think I just went Australian then, didn't I? We all know how Maggie yeah, tells us. Yeah, I like butter. to think that Maggie uh, and Matt were just protesting on their own. Yeah. And like they walk back in and go, how good's butter? And as if to like yeah. turn around and go, Nicole, never do that to yeah. us again. <laughs> he, the um, were you there? Did you have spy cam? Yes. <laughs> Did you have I spy you. cam? You had spy cam on me. Me yes, in the bush. Same. It's Christy in the bush. Yeah. That's why the AVO was out. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, I, we it, look. That was a hard week. That was a hard week, and it was quite controversial. Yes, um, but the fact is that uh, you know we we've got to look at what what is actually on trend and what people are doing and eating, and and that's what makes this show accessible. And yes, there are food trends that happen. You can't ignore them. And and the whole sugar-free diets and all of that stuff and um, people who are gluten intolerant. And, um, you know, you, you, you've got to acknowledge that, I think. I think that's really important. And, you know, certain bakers will just do that in their bake um, mm. anyway. But it, that was a very... That was something that was really clear and happening when we filmed that that series. So it was really important to do. And yes, and was, people did go. I'm not quite yeah, but sorry. Something we spoke to Elena Duggan, Elena Duggan from MasterChef about when we talked mm. to her a lot about that because mm. well, she did most of her her cooking in in MasterChef gluten free, gluten free. Mm. And never mentioned it. So, but everything was gluten free yeah. as she as she did it because that's something that she does within her own life, and it was yeah. good. The, she as she said, you know, with that one because we spoke to her about free from week, and she said that was one of those weeks where she was like, it's representative. Yeah, inclusive. and she's like, yeah, there's a lot of people is. that can't have all of these things like dairy, for example, and they're watching Bake Off, going, well, I can't eat any of this. Um, yeah, the, the, the free from sugar though. Um, <laughs> I did like the fact uh, you clarified refined sugar. It's just refined and sugar. And look again, I'm not going to have a shot at you. What I am going to say to you is, mm. Chris is trifle. How many people were needed to take that down? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that thing felt oh, like a that, that, that was an after that one. That was an incredible trifle. Kept, kept, like, I know we're talking about refined sugar and all of that stuff, but I need to acknowledge that trifle. That was so incredible. Can I just... So I need to tell you about when they all... So we, you, all the bakers have to present their bakes in a certain way. And and they were all freaking out about the trifle, right? Because a lot of them were like, oh, we don't know what to present it in, blah, blah, blah. So wonderful, again, Kate Nichols and the most incredible art department. Every year we've had the most incredible art department that come on that work very closely with Kate. And there was this panic around that how people were going to, serve their trifle and then they wanted different shapes and sizes and this and that and whatever. Um, so we got a whole lot of different um, different uh, trifle dishes and stuff and then we, we were like, oh, some people were going, oh, we want we want it bigger. And then so we ended up going, okay, well, vases, okay. let's just get some Chris. vases. <laughs> and, and, of course, there was a whole, that like the night before I think it was, or two nights before, we were like, okay, we've bought all this stuff for you guys. Like, what do you want to present it in? Because that's what we do. Because the bakers do work on their showstoppers and their signatures well in advance, you know, um, because we want them to have the best best possible chance at all of their bakes. But I swear to God, it was so funny. He he came in to, to have a look at um, the, different, the different things that we got for the trifles. And... Yeah. Chris just looked at me, looked at that, and it was a vase, and looked at me, looked at the vase and went, that's mine, and then she <laughs> grabbed it, like the big bear that he is, grabbed it and wandered mm-hmm. off with it, like this big bear, and I, I was like, you're not going to use that, that's enormous. He's like, I'm going to fill it right up to the top. It was <laughs> so funny, and he did, and I was like, you are not, and he's like, I am, watch me, and I went, I am. That's what I do. I watch people bake stuff, and then he did it, and we were. Oh, it was so hilarious. <laughs> I actually had to get those comedy spoons and the ladle, you know, the massive ones yeah. that you know, oh, no one's clear you to taste it. That gift yeah, is legendary. I, yeah, it was. 
in, incredible. Anyway, we were talking about free from, sorry, and then I started talking about... No, no, that's where I wanted to go. Trifles in. I wanted to go to the trifle because, let's face it, it's the highlight of free from It's week. an iconic moment it in iconic, Bake Off history. It is an iconic moment in Great Australia <laughs> Bake Off. We have shown that to bakers worldwide and gone, so when we did trifle... <laughs> yes. And Call that a trifle. They're like, oh, what, what, trifle. They're like, what sort of episode should we watch to really sum up Australian Bake Off? And we're like, go see free yes. from... Watch the trifles. <laughs> and like British Baker, like, oh yeah. really? A good trifle? I went, oh, you'll be surprised. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that, that, that was legendary. just, it was hilarious. That was hilarious. There's been some incredible bakes and hilarious bakes. And honestly, some, we, we give these bakers massive mountains to climb. And sometimes I'm like, that's too that's too big. I'm a bit worried. And I, I stress along with the bakers. That's what I do because I want them to succeed. I don't want them to fail. I don't want to see disasters. I don't want any of that. So in the shed, and this is, okay, fourth wall again, I'm sitting behind, you know, the back wall where, they, where the fridges are and the, um, the um, microwaves and stuff are. That's a fake wall. Behind that wall is the... the um, kitchen, the prep kitchen where we test all the technicals, we keep all the food stores and all of that and there's also the control room where I actually watch everything that's going on. We've got our wonderful director and lighting department, head of sound and and there's a lot of crew back there but that's actually a fake wall and so there are two more rooms behind that main shed so and there's a big room. That marquee is incredible. It's like a TARDIS. It is a TARDIS. It's, it's, it's a TARDIS. It is. It is a TARDIS. It is. That's incredible. But it, it, yeah. So we're, you know, we're back there watching it all. And, I mean, we do cut out a lot. There are a lot of people moving um, down. I mean, you sort of, how, how can I describe this? So, you know how we always film out so you can see the outside world right yeah. so we feel shoot, so we're always filming out um but if you ever see a wide shot of the shed there's there's a long sort of uh, a long well there's gaps between the two rows of of benches and that's where all of the art department and food team and producers all run up and down so they're not on camera like sometimes you get some people on camera, but there's usually like that's why we film out through the window so crew aren't running in shot or getting in the way of the bakers, etc. And there's a lot of people who are helping the bakers along the way. Like I need another spoon, and you don't see all of that stuff. But well, um, you're oh, good at this production. Was... Uh, you seem to know what, what you're doing there. You seem to be very good at this production thing, Nicole. Just. just... Oh. No, I just pretend it's only nine percent bullshit, one percent brain. Shoot away! Yeah. Don't shoot him! Shoot away! Shoot away! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. that bullshit. <laughs> no, it's, there's there's hundreds of people. I honestly, hundreds of people that work on this production, and they're all incredible people that make this show as special as as what it's become. And every year, I, I believe that it's gotten better. And what I'm most proud of is the fact that it's brought people together. We've created a Bake Off community and the bakers from series to series that we have done have become friends and that's what I always intended. Love the bakers, love the bakes. And, and it's one of those things we've talked about and we've, we've, we've mentioned before that some of the bakers are sort of linking in with the overseas bakers too, which is making it even broader community. Yeah. But you mentioned yeah. about the, the, the environment around the show. Did you expect to find such a hardcore, loyal group of people watching? Um, Cause I, I always thought, yeah. Tragic, I they? always... Tragics for everything, yeah. love. We just happen to be tragics for this. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I don't know, when I, when I started on this, on uh, like, on this show, I was sort of like, mm, this is interesting because I was, I, I, I had done some work on a lot of other food shows previously and, um, and I was, and it, there were more food shows, not necessarily baking. And I loved the Great British Bake Off before this, this happened in Australia. I loved it. And 
I, I knew there was something in it, but I didn't really realise there'd be such a hardcore community. And and there is. And every year when we've done auditions, it's so beautiful meeting, you know, there are familiar faces that have, have you know, that keep coming back to audition. And, and it's a pretty gruelling audition process. And, you know, people will will come time and time again and we really encourage that because you know your baking is only going to get better one hope yeah. over the years like i mean and and also we try and represent a, a wide range of bakers whenever we cast and so we've kind of even created it's really love going on an audition tour because there's always familiar faces hmm. and like annette um she she had um, come to auditions for several years and then it wasn't until this year that she ended up in the shed and that was not because of her baking as such because she's always been a brilliant baker. It was just about the mix of bakers that we have in the shed because we try and create, you know, a, a, a representation of a vast, a, a vast array of different types of bakers. Yeah, you don't want everyone making like, the same thing over and over again. You want well, having the same yeah. strength or the yeah. same like yeah. skill set. I guess. You want yeah. diversity. Diversity builds. Also, everyone improves themselves from seeing exactly. everyone else in there and going. You're doing that. They, That's amazing. I might try this. Yeah, they learn from each other, and then we, as an audience, learn. And I still say that I'm an audience because I learn from these bakers as well. So it's like we always try and make it slightly different. We've never, and, the, and that's another thing, we've ne a lot of reality shows tend to cast in a way that is, okay, we have a villain and we have this and we have the nice person and we have the blah, blah, blah. We don't we've all seen like them, really. we know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, we know we you, have the you, token you, you, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't we don't cast like that. It's, it's about showcasing different talents across the board. So it's um, and and it's and, and it's so nice. Yeah, the the actual diversity of the cast is like like the bakers as well is beautiful mm. because you have people from all different age groups, different cultural backgrounds, yeah. different yeah. Um, sexual orientations. But it's not made. Yeah, it's it's, it's shown to me. This is just. This is just life. This is oh, just community. And by the way, they're a really damn good baker. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And first and foremost, that, that's what they are. And they all bring different things to the shed. And, and that happens every year. And we try really hard to, to you know, and that's in, con uh, in consultation with, with Foxtel, who are amazing and have been so supportive of this, of this show all along the way. And um, we we always hope for that, and we always get that. And and um, yeah, and every every time we do an audition tour, we always say to people, you know, um, because you have to you apply, you can apply, and then you get a, a invited to an audition. And there are different stages, like anything. But um, we always say to people at the end, like, please try again. And, and it's not necessarily about your standard of baking. It's just about the mix in the shed. And there are only 12 benches, which is awful. Like I can tell you, every year that I've been on a casting tour, I come out of a casting tour with the team and go, I wish I had three, four or five sheds to fill because I well, could. I, I have an idea. So, what we do, yeah? we get everyone who wants to be on that couldn't make it that year to do a bake-off float for Mardi Gras. I'm just saying, mm. look, so many people making rainbow yeah. biscuits. <laughs> yeah. It would be perfect. We've already got a plan going for Pride when it comes to 20, Australia. 2023, is it? To Australia? 2022, I think it might be. So, Jay, so we're like, we've yeah. already got that plan in, 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 in process. Now, am I invited? Uh, you're of course, you are invited. Please, you're creative director. Anyway, <laughs> so. Um, we've got a couple of questions before we then segue back we'll into We'll need Katie as well to tell us yeah, what Katie is tell us what fakes. <laughs> what crowd fakes friendly. Only crowd friendly, like float friendly. Like what's sturdy? <laughs> what's sturdy enough to be on a float? Um, or be the float? Um, what's sturdy enough to be hand on, Katie? Because um, one great big long eclair. So, <laughs> so, which is also very simple. Anyway, um, so we also Green asked. Spurting out the end. We asked the audience as well to give us anything using the hashtag Ask Nick. Yeah. And, 
uh, we got a yeah. couple of good questions. So um, yeah. the first question was, how many days did it take to film an episode and how much stuff do you have to cut to get to broadcast length? Okay, that's a, that's a hard question. And I wish, I wish we could include everything. But really it comes down to two. Every episode is about two and a bit days of filming. And we have six to seven cameras going continuously over a 12-hour day. We end up for one episode with, I think it's about a, anywhere between 100 and 120 hours of vision, which we have to cut down to an hour's television. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's, that's a lot. A editing process. Um. It's, it's quite, quite a lot. And, mm. and it's really hard. The, the edit is actually a very, it's a very hard process and it's multi-layered because it's, it's like, obviously we want to stay true to the story and, 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 and we always do. And we want to feel like when a, when a viewer sits down and watches Bake Off, they don't feel, they feel like they've watched the entire bake. That's yeah. what we always are very, so it feels seamless. Yes, we go outside and go and see beautiful shots of, birds and dogs running around and the dogs are my thing because I'm dog obsessed so as the series has gone up we actually had a dog um, a dog shoot day where we invited a whole lot of dogs out to the shed so we just filmed dogs all day that was yeah I just I needed that to happen um, and but um it is hard it's multi-layered because when when we go in into edit an episode it's it's if you on a very basic level you're dealing with all of this vision and you've got you want to get very clear in um in in every bake the process of the bake itself so you know what everyone's doing what they're baking what stage they're at so the first layer is the process of the bake and yeah. then it is the the story of what happens during the bake, which includes the the character moments, meaning you know people's stories, etc. That's the next layer, and the layer on top of that are those comical relief moments. <laughs> so it's it's you know when you need a break from the baking, the and you need, you need Mel and Claire or <laughs> Matt and Maggie to crack a funny, um, or Maggie, Maggie just to does accidentally, it accidentally, yeah, yeah accidentally. <laughs> An accidental funny. Um, so it's it's really hard because it's like there's so much beautiful stuff from the bakers. You always want to you want to include everything, but it's when you're dealing with like cake, you know, you've got your different layers and your ingredients. You've just got to get yeah. the to make it because it can be a cake, it can be an episode, but is it going yeah. to fulfilling and and fulfilling just like a cake? Oh, circle exactly. of life, clean. Exactly. An episode of Bake Off is just like a, eating a piece of that, cake. It really yeah. should be. Done well there, Christy. Me done, and my done. allegories. Yeah, look at you with your allegory. <laughs> so the next question, the next question we yeah. have to ask is... Well, I feel this, like I've, I need a buzzer at the other end of this. No, yes, well, this I one's... I the right answer. answer. <laughs> this one's from, an, from an, an aspiring baker by the name of Robert. Um... <laughs> Who asked two oh, questions? The first oh, one he Robert. asked was, "I love this, you, Robert." Shout out to Robert. What? Yeah, Sorry, he was yeah, he'll be, he'll feeling right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, does Nick right. sleep at all during filming? That was his first question. No, no, we all know. Hey, We're... Robert, that's really mean because, like, <laughs> didn't I look nice on set? Even though I wore my UGG every morning because we <laughs> filmed during winter. <laughs> I did try and put makeup on. I'm sorry it wasn't up to your standard, whatever. The no, I don't. Question. I don't say. The second you question. Can I release <laughs> Bake Off Uggs. Yeah, Bake Off Uggs, yeah. Um, so that would work. Bake Off Uggs. Marketing. <laughs> so, welcome. Um, now, the second question that he asked was, and I, I, I know he asked this sort of probably knowing the answer, is there a secret blooper role? And secondly, what's probably the funniest thing you ever cut out? <laughs> Oh, 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 there's a lot of funny stuff. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay, I have to choose what I say here because I don't want to offend anyone. 
All right. What was the first question? Sorry, first, first question. One, is, what there was the first? A, is there a secret blooper role? Yes, there is. We do. It's, <laughs> we do have a <laughs> secret blooper one. role, and it's usually got to do with crew doing really silly things <laughs> with sweat. bakers that we can't. Yeah, it's can't just use. quite funny. You can't yeah. use like that's and Christmas can, party stuff. And the yep. second part it's was not the office. And the second part was what is <laughs> that you can mention the funniest thing you cut out. Well, there's so much funny stuff that's happened, but there was I was quite stressed one year during the edit and um and a lot of the editors knew that I was quite stressed. I'm still, you know, hilarious, obviously. obviously. And um, but yeah, obviously. And I'm I'm, you know, really nice. But I was quite stressed. And and one of my well, my one of my lead editors, he knew I was quite stressed out. Anyway, he so we you know, I was talking about the time passing shots. When, when, you know, like the bread's in the oven, the bakers are waiting, et cetera, and we go outside of the shed and we have, you know, beautiful, you know, bees and, you know, dogs running around, et cetera. I had a screening and an internal screening of one of the episodes, an early screening. Anyway, so he had put in one of the sequences of time passing, just a dog doing a shit, and <laughs> it was just to make me laugh. <laughs> That is perfect. That is so good. When you come down to it, and that was only because, bless him, he knew I was so stressed and I needed needed a laugh. And Isn't it I, have, I was making. And then there's a dog yeah. shitting and it's like gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm done. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, so there's the other, the other, one of the other questions, and this one cheekily came from, you know, the, the Bake Off Twitter account that actually asked us to say, uh, have you ever gone back for seconds or even thirds on a particular bake? And what was it? And what was it? <laughs> Second and thirds. What do you mean? You know, gone like... back in, so you had one, had a bit of one of the bakes and gone, I'm going back in on that and gone back and had a second helping and then had a third helping. Oh. Oh god, yeah. You know all the camera guys have forks in their um in their pockets. So oh, at the end of clever. filming Yeah. <laughs> like seriously, like it is like seagulls and it's like I swear at the end of every bake it's like everything's demolished. Even if you know, one of the ba- bakers forgot to actually cook it. But, like, the crew is in there. They'll eat it. Like, they've I mean, got I'm not, horse, right? I, mean, I mean, I'm not going to lie, and we've talked about this on the podcast, but when we were at the last series grand final, um, mm. my favourite moment of that was the fact that we somehow managed to smuggle an entire nougatine wall of Barb's showstopper. <laughs> that was Olivia. Olivia <laughs> managed to smuggle it to us. So Olivia's walked back over and gone, hey, would you like some nougatine? That's the wall it's, of the bake. I presume it's a, it's a cameraman bribe. <laughs> I think it's the wall that fell down. Yeah. So, um, but Olivia's come back over and gone, here, would you like some nougatine? Sure. <laughs> sure. sure. The, the, oh, the, the, when you say Barb's nougatine from the grand final, it gives me heartbreak. It was, that was like, I, I get sweaty palms talking about that. That was awful. Oh. But it tasted so good. Yeah, but it was just know. like, that was highly stressful. Yeah, yes, it did. I like grabbed most of it and let it go. So, yes, it did. It tasted amazing. Um, the yeah. other question that got asked was, and this is a general opinion question, was what did you think of the fact the UK, and again, spoiler alert for people coming up in the UK series when it airs, what did you think of them doing the Baker's Dozen this year? So they went with 13. Mm. And did you think mm. of incorporating our suggestion of a, of a fake crew member. crew member in there so no one goes home week one? <laughs> I love it. I don't, I don't, I hate, like, when you say, like, I, I like it when no one, I mean, we've only had it once when no one goes home. I hate yeah. when people have to go home. It's awful. Huh. And I get really teary. So. And it's always hard because you look at it and you're I know like, I, you're all good. <laughs> yeah. It, no, I, I get really teary. I get really teary about there. It's it's, just, uh, I know I just didn't answer your, your question, but, yeah, I'm usually the one crying in the control. It's one of those things we talk so, about all the time, whereas with Bake Off, unlike a lot of the other, other food shows, Bake Off, they tend to go home not because they've screwed up, but just because everyone's mm-hmm. been so 
good. And it's but like, just, sorry, yeah, someone's yeah. got to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. You get and one that's, where like, that's, that's what it comes down to. Like, mm. honestly, that so, so many times it, it, it comes down to that. Like, and really, honestly, most of the times it comes down to that. Well, we have to eliminate someone. And, 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 and I know it's really hard for Matt and Maggie because it's just like, well, everyone does different stuff like how can we judge it it's just it's really hard like and yeah. and that's one of the reasons why we have three three bakes in in each episode it's like so they've got more to actually look at and we we can't actually include all of their judgment on everything otherwise because you know as i said 100 and, between 100 and 120 hours of footage but, you know, and it, we'd be watching slow TV and everyone would turn off, like, if we actually aired everything. Imagine that. Maybe we should do That's Bake Off slow yeah. TV. Bake Off like, Network. Imagine that. Oh, the slow Bake summer. Yeah. 24. Slow summer could be great. Oh, forget the train. Yeah. No, my friend yeah, would just... You my could see all the funny it. stuff then, including yeah. the dog shitting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Chris, as Chrissy just said, she has the friend who, who came up with Oscillating Fan on Netflix. And it was actually his fan. Yeah. Um, or his, his Really? Partner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He did the he did the oscillating fan. You know what the biggest tragedy is? Mm-hmm. Oscillating fan what? broke and got thrown out. I'm like, surely that's <gasps> gonna go straight in broadcasting archives. Surely. Like, <laughs> Hall of Fame. Oscillating oh, fan wow. broke and went in the bin. That's see, you're not the only one with bombs here, Nicole. We can give you <laughs> oscillating <Yeah>. fan ended <laughs> up in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> no word yet on what happened to Roaring Fire, but oscillating <laughs> into the bin. Um, it was this... banned. Total fire ban. <laughs> Even fake fire. ones on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Can't open it up. It's Netflix fast <laughs> coded. I really want to see that now. <laughs> Is that Netflix puts total fire ban? Total over fire it? ban. Can't open fire. <laughs> um, and diverts you to the um, fires near you. <laughs> <laughs> before we before we finish up, I just want to ask. What? Oh, do we have to finish? Can we do no, slow no, podcast no. now? It's slow podcasting. I'm fine with that. I'm just um, going to go to the loop. <laughs> you, you wanted the dog. You wanted the dog. There you go. Um, so what have been some of your, this is, okay, you want the podcast to roll on forever. We can do that quite simply by yeah, asking. Yeah, can you do that? That'd be nice. What I quite enjoyed this. I was quite nervous about it. But, um, you, you, yeah, you know. In the you should be in entertainment. <laughs> um, what have been some of your most memorable things? We've talked about fee dropping the pies. We've talked about that damn trifle. Just maybe things that we've, were either on air or just things that have been really memorable to you. Um, yeah, you wanted the podcast to go on forever. I, can do that. I do. This is going to be a slow answer for your slow podcast. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, comfortable. <laughs> um, uh, do you know, I've had such, uh, and, and I, I ha- hate sounding like such a, a dickhead. I've, but I've, I've met such amazing people as far as the bakers are concerned, but also such an incredible crew. Like to pick a moment, just, I don't know, like it, it, it just, I've, I've laughed, I've cried. Like, like it feels like no, a moment itself in all honesty. Yeah. And you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's actually made me grow as, as a producer, like it really has, as cheesy as that sounds, but I've learned so much um, working with such an incredible team to create such a beautiful show and, and I enjoy watching it and I, I love hearing that people love it because it's like, people feel good when they sit down and they watch it with their family. The fact that they watch it with their parents or their kids or whatever, that brings me joy because well, it's, it's, that's it's what TV these, should be about. Yeah. You know? it's one of those, but I, I mean, where it comes through all of that love that you talk about and all of that attention, you know, to, detail. attention to detail and, and the, you know, love the yeah. bakers, love the show that, comes through to the audience watching at home. I say this frequently to the bakers and we've, we've said this a lot. You can't fake good people. And no, you can't. It, every time we've spoken to a baker, we've been fortunate enough to speak to a lot of them. Um, mm. Every time we've had interactions within the show, it's just good mm. people. And it's something that 
it's it's a rare thing to find within, and you know this obviously better than we do. It's a rare yeah. thing to find in in the world of television that it's just yeah. this room of good people making a good yep. show and having fun exactly. doing it. Yeah, and, and just it, laughing and crying yeah. and doing all of the things that you do as as a human being. And and it's like I I you know I've I've cried in in Maggie Beer's trailer just because I'm over tired. Oh. Like <laughs> I I've you know, I have so many, I get so many hugs from all of the bakers. I laugh to I'm yeah. crying because, um, you know, Mel and Claire are cracking too many funnies. <laughs> and, um, or I'm just laughing at myself because I'm screaming at Matt to smile more and stop being scary. <laughs> and I, Matt, you really <laughs> nice smile. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's like Matt is... That's gorgeous. Got him. Yeah. He he he's hilarious. Like he is he's a funny human being. And the the the, the crew, just how they support one another. Like it's TV's hard to make and the bakers go through a lot on this show because they it, it is a hard schedule. It is a really hard schedule and they work their thumbs off to make those those bakes happen as as do the crew working alongside them but um you know it's it's like there is so much respect that happens on that set and um so many laughs as well that that happen that it feels like a family and and i'm feel privileged to have been a part of it and to be a part of it so and i love that you know, people watch it and feel engaged. And I love that Foxtel has supported this show all along the way and um, helped to create, create something actually really beautiful and not far from, you know, what the, what the UK has done. It's like in, and I bow down to the UK because they brought it to us and they created it in the first place. And, you know, we're, how blessed are we? to be able yeah. to have this show. Well, we yeah. might be a little biased, but we do frequently say that we think the Australian version has, in our minds, surpassed the British version. And well, it's like <clears> most <throat> things that England have shipped out, you know. Like it gets better here. Just the, exactly, 100%. It's like the sporting, We fix know? it. It might flip over yeah. in reverse England if we have the Bake Off ash, ashes. But England starts it, we make it better. It's simple. <laughs> and I think yeah. the best way to sort exactly. of sum it up, and I think yeah. the best way to sum this up, though, I think the, the person that can sum this up better than anyone was, was Al Mel. Our Mel. Mel Buttle, who yeah. tweeted back when we asked about questions. Half of our Mel and our Claire. Half of our Mel and our Claire. <laughs> and, and Mel tweeted out the other day when we, we put out the idea of questions, <laughs> the, the brains, heart and spine of Bake Off. And we oh, all man. love her to bits. And don't make me cry. Don't I'm not going to make you cry, you know, but again, I think Buck <laughs> speaks for all of us. Yes. Um, and I know she definitely speaks, I know she definitely speaks for the audience too, because the audience absolutely adores this show. As you can tell by the way that people were annoying you about when it was coming back, as you can tell by the way that people were annoying you about when it's coming back, as you can tell by the way that people have been watching and enjoying and interacting, and that online community is as vibrant and thriving as it has ever been and as far as I'm concerned that's probably your greatest achievement within this show for just creating this environment and being a major part of creating this environment that everyone has just jumped on board with so yeah. has been an absolute delight a pleasure a treat and every other word I can use um, and I, I just want to um, say when you see your like your colleagues and your crew and the other creators and you know everyone that's involved Tell them from all of us who watch and who enjoy this how thankful we are for everything that they do because we know that, yeah, we know that this is like what we see on TV is, it, you know, on, the, on a shallow level, it's, you know, entertainment. But and, and one other message yeah. to bring yeah. back as well. It's a very important message. I was going to say on a deeper level. Okay, you go deeper level first. It's human connection. Okay, human connection. I've got an even deeper level than all that. All right. Yeah. No. Oh. No more fucking matcha. Anyway. <laughs> Get hey, I think anyway. I've said that before. Yes. Oh, no. I, yes. Hope, I hope Maggie doesn't listen. She'll, she'll, she'll defriend me on um, the no. email. I'm she'll defriend me on the email. 
<laughs> your blocked emails. You won't be invited to um, no the No more stately be manner. No more stately be manner. Thank you so much, Nicole, for coming on. It has been an absolute delight to get um, to talk to you. It's been something I've been trying to do for uh, really wanted to. And I'm so pleased you came on. And I think everyone's going to really enjoy this. I hope they are. Yeah. Um, we've had an absolute blast. Um, like we could seriously uh, so if I... for hours. Um, Maybe we can just make this part one. And then in the future, <laughs> we'll work it out later. We'll work it out later. So, thank you, Nicole, for coming on. Until next time. Uh, I am still yes, Until next time. Um, yes, I'm Christy. That is Nicole. And we will catch you all later. Doug Poo. <laughs> I've just been locked on the roof at work and I have to call security.